We're gonna talk to some people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to some people, gonna learn a lot of stuff. We're gonna talk to some people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to some people, gonna learn a lot of stuff. Cause Krista knows blank. This is the Krista knows blank podcast, and today I have a killer guest, and it would truly be a crime if you missed this one, because our topic is. Well, we'll get to that. So hi, guys. If you like this podcast, please take a second to click like, subscribe, follow, however you're listening or watching. There's going to be a button that says click or like or subscribe. Push that button and see what happens. You could save someone's life or just make this podcast feel special. Hi, my name is Kristen Key. I'm the host of this crazy mess. You can find me through my website, kristenkey.com. There you can find all of my social media. I have a Patreon, so please join the Patreon. Support this and all of my shows. Plus, you get access to exclusive bonus content. And every month, I do a monthly game night. My guest this week, I met her on SDSC. She's one of my favorite comedians. She's so funny. She's a comedian. She's a writer. Hey, computer lady, play that interview with Katrina Davis. Playing interview with Katrina Davis. Katrina, I'm so excited to have you on today. Yes, thank you for having me. Oh, of course. I thought of you immediately when I was booking guests. I was like, oh my God, we've worked together before on, on SDSC and Nowhere shows. Um, and I know you're hilarious and uh, I know you're, you're a great comic. Um, but when I when I ask you what's something you're knowledgeable about or you're super into, as always, you surprised me. <laughs> yeah, so I picked True Crime um which i know at this point is a thing that like a lot of people are into um but i do feel like i have been interested in the human condition since birth <laughs> not like since birth but like i true crime wise am just like a woman raised by a woman of a and e so i've seen like every city confidential ever made um <laughs> i watched like just an insane amount of very realistic but forensic files oh my gosh so much forensic files my mom's favorite movie is the firm um she's like i love the firm my mom loves the firm <laughs> He just runs the whole movie. Uh, uh, but the um him the beaded sweat when he's hiding in the pipes, the core muscle strength that that takes. That little man. Um, yeah. Oh, in seen... the in the piano, it's just little piano. The whole yes, movie. so <laughs> suspenseful. <laughs> I forgot. It. Okay, I saw the firm like ten times before the age of thirteen. Is that normal? Probably not. Uh <laughs> oh my god! If we ever work together in uh, every time I go to Little Rock, Arkansas, there's a condo, and it's it's not great. Little Rock, upgrade the condo. <laughs> but every time I'm headlining, I'll make I'll make I'll I'll force the opener or the feature to watch the firm with me because they have it on VHS there and they still have oh, the VCR. So I'm like. Funny. Pop it in. We're going, and we watched. And so it's this is a movie that I watched once a year for like 15 years. Every time I'm in Little Rock, and I'm like, "Sit down, Sonny. Grandma's gonna show you a great movie." We're gonna watch The Firm. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Yeah. So I think that that is also why I like true crime. But psychologically, like I always, I when I I was not like oh since birth, but when I was young, I wanted to work in a psych ward. Uh, people always told me that, like, talked me out of it. But I was constantly telling people I wanted to work in a psych ward. I love the idea of, like, groupthink, like, the things that are behind the things that actually drive the things that we do. So I think the thing that I, in a weird way, find comforting about true crime. And I have a, I have a joke about this that does not work really well yet. But <laughs> I feel like people try to out of fear separate themselves from murderers and like horror people that do horrible things and say oh well that's inhumane or there's no way that anybody is like no someone super did that someone's dad did that Can't, like btk straight up took a break and raised a family and then was like as if he was an empty nester got back to murdering so like don't try to separate <laughs> <laughs> yourself from these people because they are people and like, like a harley should i kill a bunch of hookers seriously oh. like that was the thing that i would say that is what people really are trying to disconnect from is that anyone can murder you at any time like anytime someone walks past you on the sidewalk and doesn't bury a hatchet in the back of your head after is a good day anyone <laughs> could kill you literally anyone 
Like, if you're at a stand-up show and the entire audience's audience was like, let's kill her, they could do it with no weapons if they really wanted to. They're all just being really nice and not murdering me. Like, that's really what's happening all the time. Um, so I think that I like true crime because it's just kind of me just binging on what I know to be true and kind of in a weird way makes me feel calmer about it because it's like, yeah, tons of people kill people for even the idea of a sociopath going their entire life and their whole alibi being that they've been such a nice person their whole life is that sociopaths don't care. They're just... Like human life means so little to them that they just had better solutions than murdering someone up until then. But if they're pushed to it, you are that expendable to someone that is not right. connected in that way to reality. So I think that's why I like it. I was gonna say a lot of com like a lot of comedians are into like true crime and yeah. like serial killers. And I wondered what it was, but I think you touched on it. It's like like serial killers and, and, uh, and murderers, they, they do a really good job of like masking and mimicking other people's mm -hmm. yes. emotions. Yes. Do you feel like as a comedian, like we're not, my goal is not to kill you. My job is though, to make you like and trust me. And that is exactly yes. what a serial killer or- yes. Or yeah. even the ego that comes with in terms of being similar to comedy of knowing people better than themselves right. in terms of reading whole rooms of people and knowing how they're going to react to something or being like, I get you guys. Or even if as a comic, your strength is looking at someone's outfit and saying, you do this, you live here. I bet you're this kind of person and people dying because you're right, I think is something that serial killers also would do to victims. So maybe if is they would have- Is this creepier some... than it's supposed I, to be? I'm so sorry. The, I never know what I'm going to get from these. My two guests ago it was a hilarious comedian who's obsessed with Wendy's. So I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen each week, you know? Uh, I wondered where true crime was going to go. But when I was like, oh, you, you, you listed a couple other things are like big animal movies. And I was like, oh, I love big animal movies. But then I was like, no. One time I was working with this comedian named Alicia Wood. And we were doing a triple run together in our early 20s. Are you- I don't know what your age is, but in the Pacific Northwest, there was a, this guy named David Tribble that booked runs from Montana, Washington, and oh, Oregon. Oh, cool. It wasn't, it wasn't. Like, as a uh, young female. No, I just mean that's yeah. a cool name. Like, that the sounds Tribble like, yeah. yeah, it sounds like you dog sledded to yeah. every show. <laughs> I like it. Hook up the Huskies. We're taking exactly. the Tribble <laughs> But I was working with this comedian. We we're going to be together for like a whole, like four weeks of trip. And, mm. uh, and we got to know each other a little bit. And we, you know, we be became kind of like sisters, you know, in the way that we would fight, we would fight. And then we'd be like, like uh. friends again. My grandma died on the last, like the last week of it, or was, she was about to die. And yeah. I had to drive from Coos Bay, Oregon to Joplin, Missouri, as fast as I could what to see that? my grandma. How far is that? It's 36 hours plus. <gasps> And oh. I was trying to do it in a straight shot. And Alicia read to me, we would switch off and read aloud the book, The Green River Killer. As we oh! Did and I mean, this is like, see, I, there's a reason for this story. It's like, like mm -hmm. comedians have this like true crime or serial killer fascination. And it's, yeah. it's, it's bizarre. It, I don't know if it is also something that you made me think of in terms of being a comic in terms of, wanting to bring people to a certain reality. Okay, yeah. And so I think that might also be a part of it is being like, people being like, that never happened. And being like, no way, that happens all the time because so-and-so killed 26 women and no one even noticed until number 13. Like that kind of thing. <laughs> So you were mentioned uh, BTK. I mentioned Green River Killer. Like, I know it's weird to have a favorite, but uh, when it comes to like murderers and serial killer, but because I am drawn to the Green River Killer just because we read the whole goddamn book together. So and you that's, feel like more, it's yeah. Yeah, it's good. I hear you. And uh, I mean, I, I watched that, um, was it Ted Bundy's documentary on Netflix uh, in the last <laughs> year or so, which was interesting. But it's like right. once I saw him, I was like, ah, oh, he was. It was better before I heard those tapes. I was just about to say, in terms of being into true crime and like you said, having favorites or not favorites, it's not necessarily, there are people that have a charisma similar to like how a mob boss, you would be like, yeah, you're a murderer, but nah, fuck this guy. And they won't be quite that good because they're way worse. 
but there are people that you like less because you're like, and you're a freaking dick. Like, regular dick. <laughs> like, if I was in an office with you, I would already hate you. You'd be like, and he chops heads off? Fuck this guy. Like, there are more people that I've learned more about that way where I was, like, kind of intrigued in terms of, like, why would someone do this? And then you're like, you just suck? That's it. You did this just because you suck? Like, a bunch of people suck? This is so lame. It does kind of make me dislike people more sometimes when I get to know them more. Bunny uh, was like Brett Kavanaugh to me. He had that punchable white guy face. Yeah. Okay, like, so yeah. I kind of felt that way about Richard Ramirez. Okay. Um, who was like a Satanist and all this stuff. And he murdered a bunch of people in a super fucked up way, like families, babies. He did a bunch of super messed up stuff. He like abducted a th four or five year old girl for like three days. He stayed in the Cecil Hotel at one point um, downtown in LA, apparently. But when I learned more about him, I was like, this guy's so lame. Like he basically just kicked <laughs> off satan satanic panic by accident by just being dumb because he kind of just bled all of this stuff together and liked ACDC and Metallica and all this stuff but just like had so little going on in his not to say that he wasn't like abused and stuff and a child and stuff but like he never he didn't bring anything to the table it was so annoying um because I do feel like I Ed Kemper on the other side of that is also a horrible person and I'm slightly more connected to just because he murdered women in the city where I went to school at UF like I okay. drove past a memorial for like uh so or no that might have been was that no that was somebody else there is also another murderer of a bunch of women in Gainesville Florida and there's like a memorial for them that's been up and people repainted it's been up for like 25 years um but Ed Kemper also murdered some women in Gainesville Florida but he like went on to voice like an insane amount of books on tape Whoa, because okay. he's got a soothing ass voice like it sucks that he's a murderer because he sounds like just a bit. He sounds like one of the jug band bears from Disney were a real person like he's <laughs> got a like jovial so specific. <laughs> he's because he's huge. He's like almost seven feet tall and like like he's massive. Um, but he's got a very like calm and, and so there were just like families in the seventies going on road trips, listening to him, like read where the red fern grows or some shit. And wow. he's just like, uh, yeah, I'll tell you about how I put her head on a shelf in a second. And then like playing a tape where he reads a book for like 19 cents an hour or whatever they make convicts do work for but he is one that like is a horrible person but that i kind of find more interesting and like want to for some he's reason he's a voiceover guy yeah, that's, yeah no, that's and great. he was the first person they did in mind hunter the series mind hunter that's actually really good and he was the first serial killer that they did and the actor that they got is so good he looks just like him it is terrifying and he's so i've never seen someone move so little and be so scary he did such a good job but it is that thing where he looks he's so massive and still somehow so disarming Ooh, that's like that's, he that's, one, that's like scary he yeah used his, and he was good he practiced like he practiced getting girls into his car to give rides and he would let them go because he was just practicing getting girls to trust him and one of the first women that he murdered she was super young and scared but at one point she got him locked out of the car and he somehow convinced her to let him back in oh see now i know why you're connected to him yeah, that then he level super of her, but... but super killed her. Not like kind of, but like super. He, he majorly killed her. I'm so sad. It's horrible. But yes, it's like that's why I get interested in stuff in terms of like the idea of the psyche of being able to convince people already in a heightened state of fear to do something like that. Like trust what? you. How do you get yes. trust back when you've lost it? That's yeah. insane. Exactly. So yeah, I do. Do you like do you watch Dateline? Are you a Dateline person? Kristen Key. First off, <laughs> literally what I paused to do this podcast yes. is Dateline on my phone. I just listened to Dateline. <laughs> all I do, all I do on road trips, I've become so desensitized through Dateline that we'll be mm. watching it together and I'll be like, she was a beauty queen. And I was like, 
not a very good one. It's like, oh, she's the one who died. Shit. Like, right. it just made fun of a dead lady who's got murdered. I'm like, she's not that pretty. Like, oh, my like, body shaming a dead woman. <laughs> Do you feel like it? Because <laughs> my mom and I do the same thing where at the beginning of City Confidential, we're like laugh at how they have to punch up just like meaningless towns, like towns. Sometimes it's like St. Louis and so they have tons of material. And sometimes it's just like Thumbsville, Indiana. <laughs> like they have nothing to go on. And me and my mom are always like, oh, God bless them. What's he going to talk about? How many weeping willows they are? They're always just like bring up some random fact because they clearly had nothing to pull from. Every October, there's a pumpkin patch outside <laughs> city limits. Like, oh, you picked the one the, thing that town's The B-roll is just one cow, like <laughs> chewing. <laughs> We waited for a car to go by for 45 minutes, Bill. We're losing light. Oh I'm using the cow. We're moving on. It's time for five quick questions. It is clear to me that you're very knowledgeable about true crime, but to put that to the test, I'm going to ask you five quick questions. Ooh, okay. I'm going to read a title. And you're going to tell me, is this a Dateline episode title? Also so far. Or the title of a Goosebumps book? Yay! Oh my gosh, Kristen, this is great. Number one, the monster at large. Ooh, Dateline this is so Goosebumps. good. I'm gonna go Dateline. You are correct. That Yay! is a Dateline episode okay. title. The monster at large from February 12th, 2021. You're killing it. Okay, one for one. You're killing it. Oh. Ooh, that was good. Number two, Dateline or Goosebumps. Judy and the Beast. Ooh, that's Goosebumps, I think, because I kind of remember it. That is Goosebumps. I can see it. <laughs> the cover, does the cover have a redheaded girl on it? You're so good. You, I, I just figured you would know the, the, the Dateline. I had no idea. I thought we were going to throw you entirely when you're like, I read all those Goosebumps, too. I'm like, no, Shit. I was I was a wuss, but I did read all of the covers. I was like, I was that kid that was like, I want to watch Are You Afraid of the Dark? And then I was like, I lied. Can I sleep with you? Like, I like scary stuff, but I can't hang. Does true does true crime stuff keep you up at night? Nowhere Me near either. the way it would if it was a scary movie. I have to watch yep. scary movies like before sunset. Yes, but I can watch whatever. I messed up. I will literally fall asleep to a 911 call. Like, there's so much blood. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh my God. Number three, you're two for two. Number three, far from Spider Lake. Ooh, see, this one's hard. Goosebumps or Dateline? Cause Spider Lake sounds like it could be Goosebumps. Ooh, I'm gonna go Goosebumps just cause it's Spider Lake. <laughs> If there was really something at Spider Lake and they named it a Dateline, so are you fucking kidding it's me? It's Dateline. It's Dateline, and I've seen this you one. Far from, and I think it's Keith Morrison. It was really good, but I it watched this one. You know that someone was like, shut up, it's at Spider Lake. I wonder if like Dateline was like, oh, I, I heard of this place called Spider Lake. We should kill somebody there so we could have a good episode. Stop! <laughs> Big Dateline, murdering people for content. You heard it here first. <laughs> All right. Okay. 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 Number. So, so you're two for three. I got yes. you at the last one. Yeah. Number four. I don't know why I'm rooting against you. Yeah. Take that. Okay. Katrina. No, I like it. <laughs> I need number opposition. Four. All right. Number four. Mystery on blood mountain. Oh my God. Well, now I don't know what to pick because of the last one. Blood mountain, blood mountain, I know. but it's a mystery. <laughs> I really want to get this right. And I do not know. You did really well. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm bad at gambling. So I'm using a strategy that doesn't work in gambling either. But I'm going to go goosebumps again. I kind of want to change my it's answer. A date it's a line. Unbelievable. So. Okay. Okay. So you are. You are. I'm two, half. You're two and yeah. two. This is for yep. all the marbles. Okay. Yep. Last one. Is this uh, number five? Is this Dateline or Goosebumps? Escape from Shutter Mansion. Oh, that's a Goosebumps. That is correct. That is Yay! a Goosebumps. By Did the you know? skin of my teeth. Yeah, pulled it off. You are truly an expert on true crime. Blood Mountain? 
Wow. Mystery on Blood Mountain aired January 3rd, 2020 on uh, on Dateline. Out. Yeah. So there's a blatant bla- Blood Mountain and a Spider Lake, both Who's in the same going? season. Here's the thing. Spider Lake, I even understand because it could like look like a spider from an aerial view. There could be tributaries. Why are you even hanging out on Blood Mountain? I mean. Blood I Mountain don't... should not have inhabitants. Or it sounds like a euphemism for um, a period. I'm just yes, hanging out on Blood am, Mountain like... over here. Mm. <laughs> Having an eruption over on Blood Mountain. <laughs> an eruption. There's so many good titles, too. The Woman Who Couldn't Scream. Whoa! Wait, for Dateline? Yeah. Because they cut yeah. her... Wait, because also, was she just a mute murder victim? I don't know. I got to watch it. It's from February uh, February 21st of That's 2020. That's the Dateline where Marley Matlin solves a crime. I'm joking. She can talk. <laughs> I, you're incredible. You've sat, you've talked to me about true crime. I wish I could talk to you longer. You have answered five fit questions. And now it's my favorite part of every, sorry, it's my favorite part of every episode. And that's where I ask if you'll play a quick rad lib with me. I will. But also you just said favorite part. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> I've written oh, a I'm rad so excited lib. Because I'm so low attention that you told me this stuff, but I forgot. So I'm excited again. <sighs> Those are my favorite kind of guests. And now it's time for Rad Libs. Wonderful. Okay, here's yeah. what happened. I wrote a story. I left out some parts of speech. If you give me those parts of speech together, we're going to make a hilarious story. Are you ready to play? Absolutely. Rad Libs? Let's do it. I need a U.S. city. Texarkana. Is that a city? Yes, it is. That's I grew a city, up, right? I grew up in Amarillo, and it's it's oh, in, nice. yeah, it's somewhere in My Texas. My friend's dad grew up there, and he's a nice man. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Rising. An adjective. Uh, Henri. Ooh, we've never had Henri on the show. <laughs> Wonderful. I have no idea how to spell it, and I think I just spelled horny. I was about to say, is that honorary? Is there an H? Who knows? It looks like horny to me, <laughs> but it's Henri. It's Henri. Uh, a holiday. Guy Fox Day. Yes. <laughs> what is Guy Fox Day? Who is Guy Fox? I think he did something with snakes or guns. What did Guy Fox do? <laughs> Oh, that failure mask. of the gun gunpowder plot. They were like f- trying to fight against the king or something. Okay, but he's got that mask with well. the mustache. I'm going to start celebrating Guy Fox Day <laughs> every November 5th. Um, I need a vegetable. Ooh, rutabaga. Yes. Oh, what this is getting you? good. Because I meant to say rhubarb, but rutabaga is a vegetable too, right? I'm not really going to judge you. On okay. What are fruits and vegetables? If you don't Thank judge you. my spelling, H no. Because right now we have a horny Ronda Booga. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. Uh, I need a verb ending in ed. Sharded. Sorry. Yes. No. Low you're the brow. perfect guest. Uh, Always go brow. low brow in a mad lib. Okay. An adjective again? Oh, adjective can be just something that describes anything. Shiny. Yes. A relative. Niece once removed. Oh, a first name. Any Tabitha. First name? Tabitha. Excellent. A crime. Ooh, grand larceny. Well, because I've been listening to a lot of American Greed also. And what Red is- Collar. It's another good murder what podcast. What is larceny? I always pretend like I know, like, yes, dangerous. I'm like, it's oh, something to do is- with stealing money. A liquid. Um, Windex. Yes. Oh, I don't know why I got so excited about Windex. Um, <laughs> Ooh, a drug. Xanax. Excellent. Said that with too much enthusiasm. <laughs> a noun. Um, Buckingham Palace. Okay. It changes that sentence tremendously. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, a business. K and K's, gla- Lee and K's glass. Lee and K's glass. It's a local place from Jacksonville and they had a jingle that has burned into my brain forever. Uh, at Lee and Kate's glass, you're gonna see a big difference. <laughs> and I play, listen to that, like, my entire childhood. I need a question. Any question in the whole wide world. Ooh, I'll get a question that I used to get when I volunteered with kids all the time. Why are you black? Why? <laughs> It's, it really changes the story again. <laughs> Try not to hang out with a Southern child under the age of seven and have them not ask why you're black. I mean, I get, are you a boy or a girl? But Oh, see, there we go. A whole, I mean, it's, 
It's one of those it where it catches you off guard. I'm not the sure raw how raw child of just like staring at a body and being like, what's going on with this? <laughs> yeah, what was what is the answer to why are you black? You um I a child. Well, first yeah. off, my mom used to tell me to say because that's the way God made me. And I was like, uh, but then I just started explaining melanin cells to people. And I don't think that that went over well either. <laughs> then you're just really confused. You're a witch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> an occupation. Ooh, mechanic. An adjective. Feathered? And body parts. Multiple ones or just one? Yeah. Arm. So arms? Or... Oh, arms. Like it needs okay. to be plural? Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, arms. A verb ending in ED. Oh, folded. A machine. A juicer. And a noun. Flower pot. All right, we have a story. Oh boy. We have a fantastic story, uh, Katrina. And it's just called A Hot Take on a Cold Case. Ooh! <laughs> If there is not an SVU of a comic that got murdered, that's called that, so help me. That's so good. I'm trying to read it in a good, good Dateline voice. <laughs> Texarkana. <laughs> Texarkana was a quiet, ornery town where nothing bad ever happened. Or at least, it used to be. <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> I love this. It was a Tuesday, the morning after the small town's annual Guy Fox Day Rutabaga Festival, when a man sharded into the police station, insisting that his shiny niece once removed, Tabitha, was missing, presumed dead. <laughs> this is so good! <laughs> you should make a whole book of these! <laughs> I would very much like that. I'm gonna start doing true crime Mad Libs. Yes. Whoa. Uh, no one took the man seriously. He was well known by the police station, having been arrested multiple times for grand larceny and unpaid parking tickets. The police's theory was that Tabitha had had a little too much fun at the festival, got drunk on Windex, maybe smoked a little Xanax, and was probably just sleeping it off at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> But when a body was discovered at the local Lee and Kate's class, they begin to wonder, could this be that missing person? And if so, why are you black? <laughs> oh my God, this is so good! <laughs> well, the small town medical examiner slash mechanic performed an autopsy and determined, and determined that the body was in fact feathered. <laughs> uh, and then confirmed it was in fact the police were left scratching their arms, and the case has been cold ever since. The townspeople have their own theory as to what happened. Most believe that she was folded to death by a jealous lover. Others say that it was a tragic juicer accident. All we know is that somewhere in this quiet town is a big flower pot. <laughs> that was fantastic! Well done. I mean, I don't think that we know what happened there, but we've got some That theories. narration was amazing. Thank you. I Thank you. could not have enjoyed that more. <laughs> Did she fall into the juicer? I know, but what? whose juicer is that big? Who's got a juicer that size? It should be, that's a small town with a big juicer. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh my God, this has been such a delight. Will you tell the listeners and viewers uh, where they can find you and what you have coming up? Of course. Of course, um, you can follow me at Katrina Savad, S-I-V-A-D, which is just Davis backwards. Um, and I host a online comedy show called Valley Girl every third Saturday at 4.30 uh, Pacific Standard Time. And yeah, I think that's, oh, and also I am a co-host on another podcast called Self Quar with a uh, fantastic comedian, Baron Vaughn, where we talk to, or he talks to philosophers and other comics and all these amazing people in his life about how they've been coping with quarantine and like the last year and a half or so. That's awesome. Oh, wonderful. Oh my God, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much. You've been an absolute delight. This was so much fun. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Oh my God, thank you for doing it. Interview complete taking out a life insurance policy on Katrina Davis and inviting her on a seven day cruise. And that's how Computer Lady ended up on Dateline. Hey, I wanna say a big thank you to Katrina Davis for coming on the show. You are wonderful, you're hilarious, come back anytime. Guys, thank you for listening or watching this podcast. And please take a second to, to like, follow, and subscribe to it. Um, give it a five-star rating and 
please leave a comment or a review. I'm Kristen Key. Find me at kristenkey.com. Follow all my social media and support my Patreon. There's always exclusive bonus content and there's a monthly game night. I'm also on Cameo. So if you want to make somebody's day, give a personalized song or a musical shout out, find me on Cameo. Each week, I'm going to be bringing you a hilarious comedian who knows a lot about something. We're going to play five quick questions, do a rad lib, and they'll go home happy. So until next time, bye. We're going to talk to some people, going to have a lot of fun. We're going to talk to some people, going to learn a lot of stuff. We're going to talk to some people, going to have a lot of fun. We're going to talk to some people, going to learn a lot of stuff. Because Kristen knows.